that style sometimes brings a real kind of edge to to the recording process. So you're not sitting there exactly. going blind, exactly, know, blind, whatever yeah. happens to you. You're out there playing, and you come back and you revisit. The music. And it's, yeah, it always sounds fresh because you this never. This record sounds very fresh. Yes, it's probably because why? Because we did it that way. Yeah. Also, the producers. Um, like enhance the the feeling that uh, they are fans of the Scorpions from the early 80s, and they said what most fans say, uh, you know, the, you developed your sound like uh, in the early 80s with Blackout and Love at First Thing. That's like the essence of our sound, and uh, they were like slightly pushing us in this direction, and you don't need to push us because that's how you really sound. It's almost like you have to have this alchemy of the past and the, and the present. You have to take what made you so genuine and archetypal mm -hmm. and yet make it sound like 2010. That's why when you get fans in there that are young to mm -hmm. interpret from a production and engineering standpoint, it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. If you're not arrogant or prick about the way you look mm -hmm. at your, the way your music's made. <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely right. I mean, it sounds 2010, it sounds very like powerful, but uh, you recognize like one once one guitar of the sound and you know it's the scorpions. Yeah. Well, you guys have any thoughts there? Well, for me, it's uh, almost kind of like the American dream come true. And you know, I'm for, for this whole day from being from Kentucky, I moved out here in 87 during the hair metal phase and you know, I joined Kingdom Come and I had something, you know, semi success with that and and I knew these guys and uh, then you're like all oh, this, you know, bands only last 3 4 years most of the time and then you know, I played with this band and played all kinds of albums. Also, one uh, thing about Scorpions, they were in Los Angeles when they recorded Crazy World in 1990, and they did that, mm -hmm. with, that was 1991. Yeah. They did it with Keith Olsen, mm -hmm. and I was also recording with Keith Olsen a lot, and so I was always kind of in their face at some point or the other. And then I put, recorded with Michael, and then for me to go through all this, and then the phone rings, hey, do you want to come over and have a play with Scorpion, see how it goes, and, and to come to this, it's kind of like, <sighs> You know, it's like a, just a really great feeling about, you know, how things kind of went. And it was a lot of hard work, of course, and it's still not over. You know, uh, we've got a long way to go. Yeah. But yeah. It's very exciting. I just have to admit that I'm on kind of a mission, because if this is really the end of the Scorpion, somebody has to continue. <laughs> so I'm on the mission here, you know, I'm already thinking how, how to continue, because it's a, it's, a, it's a heavy, when you really think, how men uh, really work hard and, and everything. I don't know if I can even step up to this point to, to continue something like that, but, you know, since, uh, since you know, I'm not going to stop yet, I, I will be continue the Scorpion You're have a Scorpion's tribute band, but the <laughs> problem is you're never going to find a Klaus, you're never going to find a Matthias, you're never going to find a Rudolph. Well, maybe Matthias will join the band. <laughs> <laughs> give me a call. Um, i give you a call. Yeah, you know. I yeah. think that's a good storyline. A, a, a legendary player retires, comes back as the guitarist in his own cover band. <laughs> 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 oh my god! But he's aged uh, so, and no one remembers him. And then he pulls it off, uh, except the riffs never lie. No, I actually, saw Les Paul play in a club when he was eighty-seven years old. Uh, Tuesdays in New York. Yes, I've been Richie there too. Sambor took me there one night. Yeah, I've been there in the uh, maybe the, the, the mid nineties. Not believe how he was playing. Almost, you know, 80, 88 years. It sounded old. jazzy. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. it? I get this uh, three-piece band with a stand-up bass and stuff. You know, it was funny. thing we went in the dressing room and he like embraces Richie like he's a son. Yeah. And we sit there and I just, I, I just looked. I just witnessed these two. And he goes, Rich, I can't move this finger anymore. So I'm trying to find a new note. That's <laughs> 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 precious, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he was great. Yeah. That's it. That's great. Great. Thanks.